kicking back off right where I left off last week with Open Boat. We are still at the Fisherman Magazine show. Such a big, awesome show. And we're gonna talk to some legendary fishermen that are here at the show that make sure you come to next year so you can meet your, these guys yourselves. If you don't meet them out on the surf or on the boat or wherever you're at, but we're gonna get some motivational quotes from these guys with all their years of experience. So let's go talk to them. Hi, I'm John Skinner. And a lot of times, uh, especially today, people are asking me about uh, false albacore and the North Fork. Well, you know what, we, you know, we're here in September and what I see on the North Fork is there are two runs. Uh, September, the albies go into the sound. Now, uh, sometimes we see them on the surface, Sometimes they just go by and they go into areas, uh, you know, even as far west as Huntington, maybe, maybe even a little farther. Um, and it's a sporadic run in September. When we get them, it's, it's not very dependable. What I bank on is when it starts getting colder, all of those albies that went up west in the sound, suddenly when it gets cold, it's like 45 degrees in the morning, they kind of go, uh-oh, we've got to leave. And that's the run where we get them consistently. And that's in October, and it's really the second half of October, and actually the last couple of years, it's been the first half of November as well. So like right now, people are running around looking for albies on the North Fork, and they're complaining they're not finding any, um, you know, I, I think they shouldn't worry about it. Um, hopefully, I know I have heard that there are Albies way up west, and uh, we'll get them, but we're going to get them second half of October and uh, maybe the first, you know, 10 days or so of November. Hey! Everybody turns around when I go, hey! The fall run is here. It's, it's not coming. It's already here. So get your asses out there, get your rod, get your reels, get your children, get your kids, and go out and fish. Uh, I guess we're doing an interview here at the Fisherman Show. I'm Billy the Greek, if you don't know me. All my friends call me just the Greek. But uh, we'll get into the full run of striped bass and what you should be doing to catch some of them. Me, personally, I'm a bucktailer. I like bucktail fishing the most. So uh, I was just listening to a seminar, we won't mention who, but everyone's putting clips on bucktails. You can do that, but they fish way better without clips. And, it, and I don't fish braid. I'm probably one of the few people that don't fish braid with bucktails, but there's a reason for it. Braid is thinner diameter, sinks faster, gives the lure less action. So if you're fishing on a beach and you need a light lure, mono will sit higher and fish in a strike zone longer. And that's a real plus. So that might be the difference between you catching three fish or 10 fish or 10 fish and 40 fish, who knows? Yeah, so now this is all starting. We have a ton of bait coming down the beaches and the, the wind was east, northeast, so this is gonna start it. So you guys gotta get out there, put some time in, see if you can find your fish, find your tides. Fish are always by tide. That's the main, that's the main ingredient you need to know. And unless you're like me, I can fish seven days a week. If you only got two or three, go fishing no matter what the tide. But you'll start to notice that the fish bite on a stage of the tide almost all the time. And, and once you get that down pat, then you can decide if it's a day bite or a night bite. That's the second thing you need to do. So if you're fishing all night and the fish are feeding in the day, you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time. So it probably helps have a friend or two if you can get there. But other than that, we're getting the fish first, Jersey second. <laughs> and mind you, Billy was not talking smack about my seminar because I did fantastic. And I go. talked about bucktailing in the surf for stripers. So listen to Billy. Did you? Yeah, bucktail is the number one lure. The good part about a bucktail is that, first of all, it's a single hook, so it does the least amount of damage to the fish, which is really good. And, and bass have a tendency to inhale a bucktail, so way harder to miss a fish than on a plug. So you get that punch instead of that bite. You know, and even with a big belly in the line with a strong wind, you still hook them, you don't miss them. Whereas a plug, you'll miss a lot of fish. So if you get into bucktail and then learn, head design matters, by the way. Nobody talks about head design. There's multiple heads. There's bull heads, spro heads, bullet heads, arrow heads, ball heads, smile and bill heads. So you can do the ones you like the best. Sometimes uh, a ball head works very good in, in fast moving deeper water. Uh, smile and bills and stuff like that. Fish good on the surf. Bullets and, and uh, bullet heads and arrow heads sink much faster. So if you, if you need to get down a little deeper, a little quicker, you can switch to that but everything's adjustable. And the length of the trailer you put up, bucktail you can fit with a pork rind or the new fake pork rind, which is fat cow or whatever that stuff is. 
or you can use a twisted tail, but usually a, a trailer on the back of a pork rind helps dramatically. And slower is better usually, but not always. So experiment, put some time in, catch a big one. Billy, you're my hero. Thank you so much. Thank you.